and the most special of all editions of the show today. It is a Tuesdays with Tony, brought to you by Esco, which is your pre- and post-game spot. Grizzlies are out of town until Friday. They'll have a home game on Friday, and then on Saturday night, they are going to have the Mark Gasol jersey retirement night. They're also going to be giving out these records to the first 5,000 fans. Mark Gasol, Memphis made 33 don't play, Memphis to the bone. Super cool giveaway. And today and this week, Memphis made Mark Gasol is in town and joins us on this Tuesdays with Tony brought to you by Esco. Can you believe it? Look who's here. Look who's here. That's, that's man, the GOAT, man. Shit. He's the goat. here. <laughs> the goat. My dog. He's here. Man, my dog. Welcome back to town. Thank you. So you guys came early. Obviously, the game is not until Saturday, yeah. but it sounds like you brought the whole family to Memphis. Yeah, we wanted to be here as long as we could. You know, the kids are off school, so it was good. And now the kids are seven and nine. Correct. So do you bounce them around town and show them? That now they have, I, I would imagine they see all the old stomping grounds, right? Are you kind of like doing the tour for them? This is where it all started? Uh, a bit like that. You yeah. know, just, just driving around the city, playing in the parks, you know, going to eat where we used to eat. Um, just show me a little bit. I want to go by the house, the old house. That you know, it's too emotional for me. I, right. I love that place. Really? Yeah, yeah. I can't do that. What did you have to do when you got here? Nothing. It's just the speed of Memphis. Just you know, gets with you real quick. It's just as soon as you land and you you know you get on that two forty, like you're home. I'm yeah. saying what you missed. The people, like seeing TA today. That that to me, that just you know, <laughs> that's all I wanted to do. Just see the people, enjoy. Um, Walk around, you know, nothing much. It's not nothing big. I mean, it's just being in Memphis. It is the people. Let me tell you guys a quick story. So I was telling you before we went on the air that I went to Orlando. And as much as the city gets beat up and there's always, you know, some kind of bad news about crime or something else like that, I always try to express the same way you just did. It's the people, right? So quick story. I went to Orlando over the weekend. That's why Roser filled in yesterday. And we left the airport on Friday. And now I get to our destination in Orlando, and we're going to be getting the uh, – I think my, one of my kids asked me for something. I went to go reach for my wallet. My wallet is gone. I don't have it. Now, obviously, I had it to get on the plane when we went through security in Memphis, whatever. Now, keep the story short, but this is just to express – it's a perfect example of how much I love this city and why I love this city. The short version of the story is this. After I had gotten to Orlando, my, my, my wallet is gone. I have lost it somewhere. I go and I check Instagram, and I get a DM from a guy who I do not know who lives in Memphis, and he said, Chris, my name's Ron. You left your wallet at Chick-fil-A in the Memphis airport. And he goes, I turned it into security, but if you want me to overnight it to you so you can get back home, I will. And this guy took my wallet to FedEx after he got off work and overnighted it to me. In or I, we do not know each other at all. But that's it. And I, and I try to express to people, like, it's the people, right? The good so far outweighs the bad. The idea for that sure, I could sure. lose my wallet at Chick-fil-A and there would just be a guy yeah. who's like, hey, man, I'll overnight that to you in Orlando. So the, and so sure enough... I got, the, I got the overnight package, and I was able to fly back yesterday because some guy randomly found my wallet at Chick-fil-A. Yeah, what are the chances that's, of that's that? Dope, that's dope. That was a miracle. You got to watch out for the DoorDash charges there now and then on your car. Because <laughs> 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 it is a little bad in that thing, man. Yeah. You understand? So you talked about experiencing the people. You talk about the people a lot and how much you love Memphis in, that, in, in the movie that just came out. Mm -hmm. We went. Uh, I saw the premiere. Last Thursday. Have you watched it yet? Not yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm a little too self-conscious to watch those things. Like, I, I will. I will. I know, I know that Michael Blevin has done a great job. It's and great. I know it, I know it is, but, you know, it's, um, it's hard for me to watch. It's hard for you to talk Anything, about yourself, though, just, too, right? Yes. Yes. So this week is only <laughs> mostly about that, <laughs> which, which, is, which is great. But um, it's, it won't be only about me. That I can tell you. It how, be about me. how many times do you sit back and are you now to the stage where now you've been removed long enough that you can reminisce and think about everything that took place during your time and in, in your career here? I definitely value it. 
I definitely value everything that happened and who it happened with. I, I'm, that means the world to me more than, you know, the end goal of what happened and it's just who it happened with and, and how it happened. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I take out the most and what I miss the most, you know, you know seeing TA every day in the locker room and, and knowing what he's going to be about. That's what I miss. You know. So one of the things that I gathered from watching the documentary and, and, and covering you for all those years here, you were always, and this has become commonplace now, whether it is with running teams or whether it is you hear teams all of the time talk about shot quality or how we're playing. But you were way far ahead of the curve on this being process-oriented, right? doing you were big on doing things the right way and there's even a clip i know you haven't seen it yet there's a clip where you guys win a game i believe it's in brooklyn and it's it's jaron's rookie year and he has like 40 something points and mike has what and you're mad like you were not winning games with a 40 point you know performance by a rookie like we have got to play the right way where i was most interested where did that come from in terms of being so process oriented rather than results oriented for your career um i'm not entirely sure where it came from i just know that's what i believed in and, and what i believe in today so wins can fool you sometimes you win a game in brooklyn everybody's feeling good about themselves you go back home and like yeah we won that's, you know long term it's not going to work out like when you go in, into april may and you want to go deep in the, into the playoffs those little things that you let sleep because you won and you don't look at yourself in the mirror that's going to come back, back and bite you. There's no question about that. So sometimes wins and losses too. Sometimes lo you lose a game, but you did everything you're supposed to. You play well. Don't beat yourself up. You know, you did everything you're supposed to. So, and I you guess, don't know where that came from. Mm, I guess. Is it what they teach there where you were coming up in development? No, not necessarily. But, you know, here, like at that time, we had the Spurs, right? Like the Spurs was the team. Um, as a franchise that was doing everything the right way, right, process, an and, the, and like, okay, I want to be, I, this is what, you know, this is how you win. And they were not the most talented team ever, always. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, they had a lot of talent. They had Tim Duncan. They had four, four I think, Hall of Famers. Um, but I'm like, okay, if we, if we want to win, you know, we looked around the locker room, like, okay, <laughs> that's, you know, we don't have KE, we don't have um, other players like that. So, you know, we got to figure out how to do it together and, and believe in the process. And then when you – one of the things was – because I was trying to figure this out in terms of your development and, like, where you came up with – you know, the, why you were the way you were, right? And I, think, I know. <laughs> I mean, question. I think I, – but I do think that that's part of uh, – the documentary is trying to explore that as well. When, when you left high school, for everybody that watched you here at Lausanne, one of the things you say is, like, American college basketball was never going to be my path. But then you went over there and truly became a different human and a different player. So if you can, just take me from leaving Lausanne and then deciding. Because your family was here. Yeah. But yeah. you're going back home away almost like when a kid goes off to college. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're going back to Spain. It, it wasn't easy. My mom really wanted me to stay here and go to college. Coach Calipari, you know, was recruiting me and making sure that my family know, knew that, you know, here I was going to be taken care of. Um, but I knew if I wanted to follow that path and be a basketball player, I had to, you know, start over and go back to Spain and, and kind of like wipe up the board and like, okay, what is everything I need to do to become a, a professional? How and did you know that, though? Why did you not think that going feeling. to college? Like at 18, you don't know much. Yeah, <laughs> you, just, right. you just have a feeling that <laughs> yeah. this is the right thing to do. And if you fail, it's your decision, though. Like, I'm, I wasn't – that's one thing that I, it always stuck with me. If I'm going to fail at something – I'm going to be responsible for that decision. Like, I'm, I'm not going to make someone else like, okay, you should do this. Okay, I'll follow you. Then it fails. That person is going to be gone. <laughs> and I'm going to be standing there with a, you know, with a bad feeling. So I'm like, I'm going to make that decision. And if I fail, it's my decision. And I can live with that. And, uh, but I'm going to give it the best shot. That I can also guarantee you. Did you immediately when you got at, at you know, because everybody's always searching for what's going to happen with my life after high school. It's one of those moments, right? When people go to college away, away from home for the first time, you don't really know the way it's all going to play out. Did you know immediately, okay, this is exactly what I wanted and this is going to be my path and I want to be a professional basketball player? Because you've always had a lot of interest outside of 
basketball. Yeah, yeah well, I, I didn't know it was going to work out at all. Like, you know, it's a lot of small failures around, along the way that you have to react and pivot and like, okay, this is not working. Like, I need a little bit more of that. And uh, the first three years, like, first year I barely played. I played in, like, in the hustle. Like, it would be, like, the development team and the, the, the professional team. So oh. I, I played, like, 16 and 16 games with each. I would practice every day. Like, the schedule was crazy. Like, we would practice in the morning with the professional team. Then... In the afternoon at four, you play, you practice with the with the B team, it's called, mm -hmm. and then you go back at seven and practice again, you know, or be available for the practice again with the professional team. So you're doing practice, <laughs> three practices a day, <laughs> and you're just scrambling around town trying to get to one practice to another and eating and 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 living in an apartment with three other cats. So it's it's fun. And my dad made sure, my dad, uh, he said. Okay, so uh, back then the rules, like if you wanted to go back to college, you couldn't get paid. You're only per diem. I said, okay. So my dad said, you're going to sign a one-year deal. You're not going to get paid. Mm. I said, what? I said, Talk about sacrifice. So, so it's like, uh, uh, that, that's, that's how it's going to go? Because it said, if you wanted to come back, if it doesn't work out and you want to come back here and you're play, you're not going to be able to college. You, you're not going to be able to play. And I'm like, oh, this, okay, 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 let's do it. Uh, so I did it. So after the first year, I signed my like three-year contract or four-year contract after that. So that was a bit different. But right away, my dad said, okay, you want to take this gamble? I'm going to take away your wallet. <laughs> once, once you were there for a year, did you know, all right, I don't want to go to college. This is what I want yeah, to do. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Along okay. the way, like, they, like, we realized, like, okay, this, this might work out. And, uh, like, they wanted to sign a long-term deal. And, um, and I was comfortable. But everything changes so fast. And you have to, like I said, adapt to the new situation. Um, the coach assigned me. Left after the, you know, left after the, they signed me, he left. He takes off, fights with the GM, and just takes off. So I'm, you know, new situation. I break my foot. I'm out for like a few months. I don't never get in the rhythm with the team. Don't get to play much. Then the third year, new coach. He don't trust me. He want only veterans. I, I got to change teams. I got to, you know, like I said. You so have to politics move. go on overseas too? Always. <laughs> Everywhere. You I can't didn't know so that. <laughs> but, but I would have thought like, all right. This the project. We're gonna work on the project. Let's yeah. Let's form him into who he's gonna be now. You yeah, know but in saying? Barcelona, like it's a big team, right? Barcelona is a big team. A lot of okay. like Jabari Parker now playing there. Like a yeah. lot of like NBA guys, Exxon played there last year. Um, so the project, like Whew, they don't have that much patience in those big teams. Like right. if you go some of the smaller teams, you have, you have time to develop and they right. will invest the time in you. The big teams, you don't no. work out, you're out of there. Did you ever think that you were just gonna did you ever think I might just be a Spanish basketball player and I just may play professionally over here for my entire career? Yeah, I didn't think I was going to come to the NBA after I was done in my fifth year. Like, I got drafted. I'm like, I, I'm, not, I'm not going over. Like, uh, you know, my, I got drafted by the Lakers. Right. They call me after the draft. I don't even pick up the phone. Like, I'm like uh, 48. And, the, and a lot of and a lot is it of because of the money? The money is no, at that well, point. It didn't have nothing to do with the money. Like I was. Yeah. Why did you not go to the Lakers after you got drafted? They, they were a great team. I was not going to play. I just had been through that situation. A young player in a very good team. You're not going to play. And you have to develop. Playing time it's important when you're trying to develop. So now I think that's why the Grizzlies now it's such a crucial time. You're trying to see what you have. Yeah. You're losing. Okay. It's development time. Let me see what I have. So playing time. That playing time mm. is pressure. You can. Like, when you're trying to win, you don't have that much time. And so you were, you never even considered it. Uh, not, not until, like, Chris Wallace came over. You're right. And, like, Pau is gone. Like, yep. now it's a di different team, different, you know, aspirations. So young, the time, young guys I, that you can play with, so right? So now, now I have a chance to play. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm down. Once you could play. But you th was there a point where you thought, like, I may be like Juan Carlos, even though I know he came over here so for a back. year? Or, yeah, yeah, or, or that, like, hey, maybe I just want to play, maybe I want to be a Spanish professional basketball player. <laughs> so, so I signed a three-year deal uh, Here. when I first came, yeah. Uh, and that was hard for Mr. Heisley to understand, like, okay, this guy, you know, plays in Spain, like, why am I going to pay this guy, you know, that much money for three years when he was 48th pick a year ago? Um, you know, what has it changed? Um, so that was the back and forth with um, Chris Wallace and, and Mr. Heisley, you know, and uh, – and his team, and it wasn't easy to understand. So Rest things changed. Eyes. Yeah, things changed uh, when in, in those discussions. But uh, I think three months. Into you, haven't, you haven't seen the movie, right? No, I have not. He he reveals that it, Chris reveals he had Pal call him. 
Oh, for real? Michael Heisley loved Pow. And he uh, said, call Pow. And that Michael Heisley asked Pow. And your brother says, I remember the conversation. He said, if I do this, is your brother going to be, you know, a real NBA player? And he was like, he will be better than me. Brotherly love. Yeah, really. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, Heisley always, you know, sometimes to a fault would – Get outside counsel, but he loved your brother. Yeah. He and trusted, Pop. trusted him, and so he said he called him. And then, of course, you know, you got Chris Wallace going. Thank God, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> yeah, right? Just looking like thank a God, Pal. Thank God, Pal told him <laughs> that, right? Yeah, I don't think they, any of the three envisioned that this was going to be the, you know, how everything was going to play out. No, right? I, I, nobody, nobody could have thought of that. Um, but like three or four months into the season, that first season, I'm like, this might not be for me. Like all this losing and nobody caring and like it is, it's like, oh, like I, I think it was November. Not fun. Not fun. <laughs> not fun. Not fun. Right. Not fun at all. You don't see like we're talking about the process, right? You don't see a path. Okay, it's a long path. And it's not a pretty path, but it's leading you somewhere. Things here were like, nah, it's just day to day. Like, okay, we lose against somebody by 40. It don't matter. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then Lionel came in and that, you know, kind of sort of, you know, changed everything and gave us a direction and kind of put all of us in a place and give us, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. And uh, that's when you saw a real future. That's when I decided to stay. Like I stay. That's what like okay, this this makes sense. He spoke a language that uh, that made sense to me. Why do you think Lionel connected with you so well? He was honest. He was honest. Like, whether you like it or not. Brutally honest. Yeah, he was, you would be honest. <laughs> and as a player, that's all you want most of the times. You don't want the politics. You don't no. want You don't want tell you one thing in front and then go behind it. No. Be honest with me. It might take me a day or two, you know, but then it'll, it'll make sense if you're honest. If, now, if you're not, you know, you cannot fool everybody all the time. Uh, it's it's going to catch up eventually. So when you, and you guys both were talking about meeting up with Lionel. Yeah. You know, even when you're in yeah. town, you're going to meet yeah. up with Lionel. So, yeah. like, that's a bond that is a, yeah. it's a lifetime bond it becomes. For sure. For sure. Lionel, Lionel always was like, like I always, he ran me and my granddad. You know, he's going to say what up, what's, what's come to his mind. You Like Mark said, either you're going to take it and bounce back from it and show and prove, or you're going to crumble. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you need to hear that as a player just to raise you to that next level, man. And he did a good job of that. So, shout out Lionel Hollis. Yep. Man. Is that the first time that you thought this can be good here? Yeah. No, no, for sure. Like I, like I said, the first three months, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I, I didn't see, like I said, the trajectory and like, okay, this winning mentality and, and, and something that you're building. Right. Um, so when Lionel came in, like he just spoke a language that I, uh, that I believed in, that I trust. And, uh, you know, he became like a coach that I could follow. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he was huge. What do you think drove you? I'm not your psychologist, but I, 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 wondered, I wondered so much when I was watching it how much of it was to prove I am not this guy's little brother. Oh, for Pow? I still remember the song you made about Pow. That was you, right? That was your head. No, no. It's yeah. deleted. It's gone yeah, forever. I, I yeah, still remember. My, Mark, I was we back all in make Spain. mistakes. I was, I, was, I was about to make a couple of calls down in Fraser. I'm like, hey, go get this, Mark. Uh, I was young. I was in my 20s. Yeah, what do you whatever. Want? Whatever. Um, so, yeah. What drove How much me? Of I mean, it for was. sure, yeah, probably it started. You know, it started a lot with Pal. Mm -hmm. You know, being a little brother and getting beat up and, and going, you know, to the house and having to deal with that. I hated that. And they, they know. They saw me in, on game days when we played, you know, Lakers or San Antonio. And Pal was on the team. Different. It was a different day. It was a different day for me. We, we weren't just playing um, some of the best teams in the NBA. We were playing Pal, and, and mm -hmm. uh, it was no talking. It was definitely personal. It, yeah, I would even tell the referees. This has nothing to do with y'all. Stay out of this. <laughs> Stay out of this. Like it's just me and him. <laughs> Later on, he got he got a lot better. Later on, and um, and, and and it got easier too. Right. Like, once I started beating him regularly, and, and, and he like <laughs> he did a lot of that. A, he got yeah. the record over your brother. Do you even know? No, I think no. He got me. <laughs> he did. Nah, okay, okay. He got me. He got me. When yeah. did you and Mike become super close? Because you guys went through that initial losing together. So I think about, right. I, I already had a lot of information from that locker room, from pa not enough because they would tell me, I would listen to their stories. I would listen, you know, Power Juan Carlos to my best friend, they, you know, sharing like right. who is who and who, who does what and who cares about what. So I knew a lot about Mike before I met him. 
So uh, once I got to the locker room and then I saw from my own eyes. They and, spoke and highly of him. They spoke highly of him, yeah. About, about how good of a kid he was, how much he cared about the right things and blah, blah, blah. But I need to see it for myself. Like somebody can tell you something, but then you got to live through it, right? And then I saw it. And I think we became close. I think the pivotal point was when he almost got traded. I think that, that day, that's when he saw that uh, this, this dude's crazy. Mark, Mark is not, um, doesn't care much about himself. Like he almost got, almost got traded the next day. Mr. Heisley and, and Chris Wallace called me and Yabaroni too. Like, you know, you blew the trade, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. They, they were pissed. I know. So for people that don't know, at that time, it was Ramon Sessions and Joe Alexander, I believe, was the deal. You think about it, it's crazy in retrospect, right? But Ramon Sessions and Joe Alexander, Joe Alexander a bit of a lottery pick, and they were going to swap those two. Ramon Sessions was on a heater for Mike Conley. And then there was an article in the paper that Ron Tillery had written, and you were like, basically, this is crazy. Cannot get rid of Mike Conley for this deal. What I mean, like, and that's very uncommon, right? Yeah, for a I player to, uh, to come look, out. And looking say, back, looking yeah. back, I'm like, dude. It is kind of wild. It wouldn't have made sense. Yeah. But, but looking but back, like, to, like but, for me to say that, like a player talking like that, it, that that Because he was happen. still a young player because at the time, and, the, and we hadn't accomplished anything. I'm a rookie, too. So oh, yeah. I, I was a rookie at that time, so they, like, they were you, mad can't, at him. you can't do that. No. You can't do, but I had to. Like, I felt like if we lose this kid, then definitely gone. Because mm -hmm. This makes no sense. Right. Um, but that's, that's just how life goes. You have to make, like I said at the beginning, you have to make your decisions and live with them. It's like when they drafted um, Hashim Tabit. Hashim works out. I'm out of there. Bro, don't bring up his name on this podcast. Bro. Why not? <laughs> hey, hey, but it's true. Hey, I, yeah. I, I love Hashim. Like, he's a good dude. Tony whatever. said he tried to help him, and he wouldn't, like, stop eating hot dogs before games. Man, I'm talking <laughs> about 40 on the clock. This man got a whole nacho plate on his head. <laughs> that, 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 that was not his main problem, though. Well, man, not his main no, problem. No, no. That was not. Yeah. But you took that personal when oh, they used the number what? two From pick. From day one, like we went to training camp. I'm sitting on the bus. <laughs> I, I'm sitting on the bus. We driving down. Remember that? We drove down for like four hours. Birmingham. And, I, and a man. And I'm, uh, I'm just waiting for the first practice. I'm like, uh, Mark from, used to serve him in practice. Say, from me. the first practice, <laughs> barbecue. It, it don't matter. Offense, defense. I'm, I got to be. That's that's the way I was taught. Like uh, you gotta fight. You gotta fight for your spot, right? Uh, mm -hmm, you bring exactly. him in. There's you, just no way not to take that personal. You have to show me. But imagine that works out. There he was no out. chance I, that was working out. Man. Uh, that, obviously, they drafted because they thought it could work out. To his credit, right. he was nice in college. I give him college. When he got to the league, too much BET he was watching. There was too many music videos, <laughs> too many nachos and hot dogs, man. That man, his work ethic just wasn't there, man. I'm yeah. I sat next to him. I was around him. And then you look at Well, Mark, he's also got a guy pummeling that's what I'm him Mark got every a guy chance he gets. In, you got to. in the weight room, er, first one in the weight room, first one on the practice court, last one to leave. And you could just see it's a difference in who really wanted, man. And that's, that's also, what I took a liking in him. I'm to like, To that Yo. point, you were going to find out what he was made of, too. You have to. Quickly. You got to go mano a mano. Yeah. And, and just like, we all had to go through that. That's right. Like Xavier Henry, they drafted him, lottery pick. First thing, I, 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 oh, I'm, I'm looking really at Tia. today, actually. I just look at <laughs> today. Am I lying, though? Man, that man, man. So I look at Tia first day. <laughs> I see his face. I'm like, oh, shit. Here we man, go. Man, come on, man. That's and that was it. So that's uh, when you get to the pros, there's pros there. That's right. And, and, and you know, and, and you want something that I have, you're going to have to take it from me. Right. So it, it's just simple as that. You, it's not going to be given to you. You have to prove yourself day in and day out. And day regarding and the Conley out. thing, it, what's so crazy is, and I never even thought about this all that much, and they, they don't get into it, but the, the irony of you going to bat for him and then you guys becoming what you became – together and as a core four, the other guy was Kyle Lowry, yeah. who you ended up winning a title yeah. with. Yeah. Oh, all right. You just blew me with them. Yo. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah, they had to make a tough choice. Yo. They had to make a tough choice. I mean, because they drafted those guys back yeah. to back, and I'm sure Kyle always – Kyle was in your position. Shout out, Kyle. Right? Kyle. Which was, you're using a fourth draft pick on a point guard? I'm right here. Right. Right? right? And, of course, obviously, you had to make a choice at that point, right? Yeah. He wasn't going to be happy no. being the, the backup. It wasn't going to work out. No. 
No, for long. But and, and then you guys ended up meeting back up together yeah, and yeah. becoming teammates in this crazy way, right? Because you did that. You guys had talent. You weren't any good as a team, but like twenty something wins or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like there was talent on that team between you and Rudy oh, and sure. Kyle and Mike and I mean. And OJ was on that team too. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you guys ended up. So at what point you said when when Lionel came, that's when you knew things were changing. Mm -hmm. At what point did you realize that the four guys together were something special? Do you have in, any idea? Yeah, in practice. Like you once can tell. I saw how they approach practice and how they compete in practice, then I know I can trust you with the you know big lights. And that's that's it. Like if they if they care about winning in practice, I don't have to worry about in the, in the games. Like they're gonna do the right thing in the games. It's about the Eight other guys I gotta worry about <laughs> being in place and understanding their role and doing, you know, playing at the same intensity that, you know, that it's necessary for us to win because we were not that good as, a, you right. know, talent-wise. Like we were good, but we are not that good to just out-talent any team. So we have to outwork them. We have to, you know, take them down to the mud and 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 wrestle with them. So that's what we did. We did what we had to do. How long did it take Zebo to convince you? You say that about practice. He, he came in hungry from day one. He came in hungry. They say Zebo was not the practice player. He came in hungry. In Birmingham, tell. he came in hungry. And it was a kind of a something to prove, too, because he, they get moved in because they're taking Blake Griffin. So he always carried that, right? He, he came in hungry. And, and he, when we play live in practice, maybe he was not the best 1-0 drill guy or 2-0 on zero or I, like I agree. summer workout. I agree with that. I agree with that. He, he might not be that guy that he is going to be before drills. practice putting shots up. But when he get live in practice or competition, yeah. good luck. Yeah. Good luck. And 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 that, you know, that's something to his talent. Like he had that talent. That he when he turned into competition, he would turn into a different animal. Did you have a perception of him? Well, Before he played against Powell a lot, so he I, I watched him a lot playing. It was really a basketball thing, though. Like, all the off-the-court stuff, all the stuff that, Who like, cares about that? went like, around his neck before he got here, it didn't – It no. didn't. I, I don't care about Because you guys what hit I it off about immediately. It, yeah, but because that – you show me who you are, you know, when you're know when you in the trenches and you fight against another team. That's who you are to me. Mm -hmm. All the, If I can trust you then, I don't have to worry about anything else. I trust you for good, mm -hmm. 24 hours a day. And, and, and that's how it was for us. Like, um, we trusted each other, and, and with T.A. and Mike on the court, we trusted each other everywhere. Yeah. Like, and, and that's, that's something that's going to carry, you know, for, for the rest of our lives. How many times did you have to convince Lionel to put T.A. back in the game? Uh, he, would turn, he, he would check his ass. You know, <laughs> he would just walk by. <laughs> I get the stretching over there back up. <laughs> hey, I'm ready, man. What are you doing? Yeah, he would let everybody know he's ready. What are you doing, man? Come on, man. What was the game that everything kind of changed? Like, we were in Atlanta or something. No, no. He's in, I, 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 he's in, he's, I'm going to get this. I got the mic now. Listen, we in L.A. And listen, I'm sitting down. You're going to remember this, too. I'm sitting down. Clapping, cheering for everybody. I ain't playing until the fourth quarter. Coach Hollins put me in. We down like eight or nine in the fourth quarter. Like, T.A., come on. I come in, I get like four, five steals. Mm -hmm. Change the trajectory of the game. Coach Hollins, we come and win. We probably win about like five or six. Come back in the locker room. Coach got the ball. He said, I want to get his ball to Tony Allen. You know, he ain't played in about 20-some games. <laughs> he could have been pouting. <laughs> he could have been. He were. <laughs> no, I wasn't pouting. I, I mean, Mark would know when I'm upset. No, Mark no, know when no. I'm hot. First year was crazy. Like, he was best attitude. Like, because he felt like he needed to teach OJ. Like, I just I'm, left the finals, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what am I saying? We 9, 10 games behind 500. Why ain't playing? You see what I'm saying? But. That specific game, he talking about coach came in and say T.A. could have been pouting. He could have been down. He could have been out of shape. He couldn't. You know what I'm saying? He could have yep. just said the hell with everything. I didn't. I came in and made a difference in the game. And after that, shit, we went on the road. Yeah. We went on the road. You know what I'm talking about? You're trying to win. Xavier so, had turned his ankle, uh, tore uh, his knee up. Yeah, he had got hurt or something. And then, you know, but yeah. You know how that went with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like talk about that. Yeah, but you, you need but, guys that are going to help you yeah, winning. Yeah, come on, man. We're about that, winning. And, and that's who, what you're looking for, right? right. And T.A. Just, it just fits perfectly to that. Like, he's going to take, take it to a different level. Why do you think that the bond became so great between the four of you? I think our families, Outside too. Outside of I just think winning. Fa families, you know? too. Families yeah, bonded yeah, together. Families like, our wives kicking. bonded. Our kids bonded. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it was like a, like I said, a 24-hour thing. Like, no matter what we were home on the road like 
we were always, you know, connected in a way. Do you think about how special it was in reference to like other other guys you played with or just watching the NBA now? And you think about like this doesn't happen for everybody where you get four guys that spent that amount of time together. I mean, two guys can having four that had that many big games and how many, you know, days and nights and everybody kind of growing up and having getting married and having kids like it's kind of it's kind of crazy yeah. the way you know how rare it really is it makes you value it more cherish it yeah. like, you know, and, and we, I think we fought it till the end uh, kind of hold on to it and they're like okay you know let's not break it up let's let's try to keep it going but things happen and, and, and people change and, and, and you start to move on and, and nothing is forever right that, that's what makes us more even more special uh, looking back now, so just it was, it was just yeah. unique, unique. That it's certainly unique. What do you think about the most outside of the people? How, Is there how, how imperfect we were um, individually? <laughs> like how many flaws we had? Like each one of us? Like, yeah, it still worked. And and not only worked, but it, like he covered my back on things that I I, I, I was not great at. And then I try to cover his back on things that he was not great at. And the way, same way with Zebo, with Mike, like we cover for each other a lot, and and we care about it. Like it wasn't just you know, it, we care to to a personal level that it's something nowadays um, how the world is. It's it's not that common. So mm -hmm. I think that that makes me look back and uh, even savor it even more. How much do you think it matters to like each other as people? Like actually be friends. Do you I mean, think I, that I, makes a difference no, on yeah, the basketball but, but don't, court? Don't be fooled, though. Like, there were days that I wanted to slap the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he would drive most, me crazy. Most, no, not most, not but, most. <laughs> but there were days that, like, all right, T.A., come on now. Yeah. Be, be, but that's just the way, that's what families are, right? Like, that, you, 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 you go with the good right. days and the bad days. And then there were days that he wanted to slap the shit out of me because I would not talk to him or whatever. Like, all right. So it happens that way. But eventually you know that it's all love. And that we want the same thing, which is winning. Because we know winning takes care of everything else. If we win big, you know, he's going to be taken care of, his family, my family, all the family is going to be taken care of because winning matters a lot. Which, which win or series win do you value the most? Man, I, I have bad memory. Is there one that is more special than the others? I remember, I, see, I remember plays and matchups and schemes and, and like specific things more than series. Like, because to right, me, it's the, right. it's the, the addition of many plays that led you to win the game, right? Or series. So there's no one that I could tell you because it was just so many of them, of a small plays that led us to, to like, to this bond that we all have, that I can't tell you specific series that I did. Okay, now this is what I can trust these guys. It, it, it didn't happen then. I told you it happened in practice. Is there one that hurts more? A few, a few. But I have selected memory, and I and I kind of like try not to remember that. <laughs> right. There's like you know who was it was like a, a couple weeks ago when Zebo was in here with us when. It, uh, he said the one he got suspended. Yeah, the one he got yeah, with, with forever. Adams. He will forever. Like, it haunts him. I don't blame him. It hurt all of us, but you move on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah that sucked. You know, we, we will go back. We'll, like, at the same time, what are he doing in the game? The game is over with. Why are he still in the game? Mm -hmm. I'm sure he hurts him, hunts me, hunts TA, hunts the coach that, you know, uh, I think it was Dave at the time. Yeah. Um, that had him in the game when – it was impossible. Stephen Adam was blocking every shot and dunking every ball, and like, he looked like, I'm like, who is this guy? Um, but the game was over. So we already think about the next game. We're going back to OKC. Right. We have to gear it up and like, look at film and see what we need to do to beat them, but now without Zebo. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a big difference. Uh, yeah. it's, he's a horse. And your team was great that year. Yeah, you were great. Meanwhile, I want to ask. Let me see. Pause the, the matchup coverage because you played in two two uh, eras almost like to the point where when we did pick and roll we'll be on the same page and I tell you I'll be like yo yeah. hey bro be up on this pick and roll for about three four seconds I'm getting over this pick you get back to your man yeah if you don't do that I don't even want to shake your hand <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> if he ain't showing on that pick and roll I don't want to shake your yeah, hand yeah I'm talking I'm and, not talking and to then you. to make that adjustment the, I was probably out the league by then but. Y'all, the league had went to just 
automatic sag. Drop right away. Take away the, the roller. Yeah. And at some point, like, it's like, yo, you just, you just like, taking the night off? Or, like, what was that feeling like as a big going yeah, to that like, transition? I hated giving up plays. I hated giving up, like, certain shots. But the league got so talented that you have to take, you know, not only take something away, which you're willing to live by. Like, well, okay. I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, if they start making the floaters and pull-ups, so be, just, so, so, just, be it. so so they beat us with you know twos. of the dribble twos right? right so you want to take away the threes you want to take the rotation and all those things so and that's what that was about because I I watch basketball now and I was like damn I see somebody get the cooking in that mid range I see them like okay we not finna tag we going we just gonna stay with the with the guard and we just gonna let him work yep. And it's like the, the guard get caught in the pick all the time. So it's like, damn, yeah, they, I, I didn't never understand. You just broke that down. That was dope. I always wanted to know that, man. That's why, like, Luca, Luca has so much, like, with his size and, and your biggest going to be in a drop, like, you create so much separation. The other guy that can't do anything. You six, what, six, 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 seven? Yeah, he a problem. Yeah, man. And another question, how you feel about the European the European guys is damn near taking over the NBA now. <laughs> I know you probably saw it, hey, but our top Luka, five guys in the Giannis, league. Giannis, <laughs> uh, Jokic, Jokic. Come like, on, man. At any list, four of the Shea top Gilles, five. Shea Gilles, I'm pressing it. I, I, I didn't even see that coming. How did the game Who, speed up? No, like everybody. That. Like, all these guys. And, did you? And Wemba now? Like, you, yeah. seven, four, like what, what Did you see the here? Jokic thing coming? No, no. I, I kudos to to Denver for believing that that you know playing like that through him um, every play and, and and creating a system and having all those group of guys that complement the way he plays uh, would would take him them far that far. Like, I kind of thought he probably got his game from you, big fella. Cause I ain't gonna lie, you 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 sound like <laughs> no for real, no no for real. Cause I ain't gonna lie, like I've been seeing that. Like his game really didn't never like. It still don't stick out to me, and, I, and there's no knock to him, but it's like I've been seeing big fella, you know, behind the back, throw that thing to me on the cut. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Step back, up, up, left hand late. You know what I'm saying? Getting his teammates involved. Yeah, Hell, they, half of my points came from him. He is. You know what I'm saying? So, Yo, but he, I saw a sign of that from you. He's doing it for 40 minutes. Like, they playing through him every play. Yeah, he's oh, talented. Man. Very talented. Man, man I, I, I like him. And, and I, what? So, Jordy Fernandez, the assistant coach, uh, for sack now, he used to be the assistant coach for um, the Nuggets. And I tell him, like, keep playing through him. All you need him to do is play a little more smart defense. Like, he, I, I want to see him, like, okay, now he has all the offense, a little more defensively, a little more. Just hands, like, you don't have to, like, go all out, no, but no. care a little more. Like, yeah. don't, don't be a target, right? Like, exactly. he used to be a target in some series early on. And Obviously, these are extremely talented guys. There's also a lot that is brought up about – the training that takes place over there. And you were talking about the practice mm. schedule earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard somebody, uh, it was a coach the other day, was complaining. He said, look, it's not, it, it's only going to continue unless we change the way we do things. They have six practices in one game. We have six games in one practice. So the yeah. And this is why the development of these guys from overseas is so much greater than what is happening in American basketball. That was his opinion, whether that is true or not. But you are somebody who went through both. Did you ever play AAU? I did play AAU. Andre Allen. You with did. Andre Allen. I you did? I played, play, yeah, I played, I played AAU with Andre Allen. We went to a couple of tournaments so with the you, Nike team. So yeah. you know the AA, you know what AAU yeah. was like. Obviously, you played high school basketball at Lausanne. You, you did both, you, you know, right, where you played in America, but you also then mm -hmm. trained before you came to the NBA in Spain. But in the, the main goal in AAU, what it is, is to get picked in the games, right? Like to, to shine in the games. That's, yep. that's the... <laughs> That's anybody's because if I if I'm the best in the game, I'm gonna get picked by whatever college and mm -hmm. so on. Over there, it's not like that. Like you can't be the best player, but if you don't do the little things and you don't play the right way, like they, we, you don't have that many players. So it's gonna it's be just the culture. It's yeah, it's 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 way more yeah. simpler. And, and the highlight is not the game. Uh, you know, if you don't practice the way you're supposed to, I don't care what your name is. I don't care. You know, your hype, your rank, anything. You're not gonna play. Really? And that's uh, that's that's, and that cool. is true across the board. There's not somebody there. You know how like like now you could just find you, you guys could like if like a 
Let's say somebody doesn't take to your son and doesn't like him, right? We'll just go find another AAU team and he'll play right, in 40 minutes right a game. Over. There is nowhere to run, right, if you're there and just say, hey, I'm going to switch teams and then this guy doesn't like me. Okay, yeah. he doesn't he doesn't understand how talented I am. Rehearsal is more important than the actual performance, right? How you rehearse as a, as a band, uh, let's say music, like how you rehear, rehearse, like – is more important than how you're gonna perform on on the weekend. So we, if you rehearse well and you do what you're supposed to, then I can, you know, the they will reward you on the on the weekend. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I was just watching that uh, that Patriots documentary on when I was on the flight uh, that they're running on Apple TV, Dynasty, whatever. And like when you walk in their facility, Bill Belichick had this huge sign and it said, "Every battle is won before it is fought." It's from like the art of war. It's like some Sun Tzu, and it it made it, it, you saying that immediately made me think of that big quote that was in you their know locker that movie, room. Whiplash, the movie Whiplash. Yep, that's my favorite movie. It is. Yeah, yeah. And it can tell you a Dude's lot about. It's really hardcore, though. Yeah, that's that's how that, <laughs> that guy is hardcore. That's how. I, but it wasn't personal. That's right. It wasn't personal. Then when you see him outside of that, he's a normal guy, and but the kid is traumatized, <laughs> and maybe rightfully so. <laughs> but he wasn't made for it. It wasn't made for it. This is why you loved Lionel. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I, I do love Lionel. Yeah. But you also, you yeah, would yeah. you would roll your eyes at softer guys. Yeah, I mean. Right. Like I say, Lionel, Lionel wanted, he, was, he wanted that confrontation. But it wasn't like, I want to fight you. It was more so, I want to raise your play. And it's going to help all of us. And that's one of the things I loved about him. And he also was a was a life man too. He wanted to preach life into you. You know what I mean? He, he I skipped the X and O stuff. He wanted to teach you how to be a young man. Mm -hmm. He oppressed that a lot too. So he still do it to the day. He always sending me a scripture or something about life. You know what I'm saying? He carried that on all the way. So big shout out to Lionel, man. Consistent. Yep. And he also would burn you to the core to make you mad so that you would yeah, be I able always, to perform. I Mark, I don't know if you remember that day. Uh, you, you got to remember this. We and the game winning shot was on me, obviously. Chris Paul hit the game winner. We down 0 2, yeah. leaving LA. We got in the first practice. Lionel Costa, man, oh man, he cursed us out so bad. He told me, uh, what did he tell me? He said, TA, hell, they not even guard you. What are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> he looked at Mark. He said, Mark, I need you to get your ass down in the block. I don't know who the hell told you, you was off Vita Sabonis. <laughs> he told Zebo, hey, Zebo. Can you get a rebound that actually counts and stop stealing them from Mike Conley? <laughs> he went down the line. Like, down and, the line. And, down told, the and told Mike, he said, Mike, you know what Chris Paul see when he sees you? We're going to X that out. We can't say that for the camera. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> say that, please, but that's what he feel like when he see you, my boy. And before you know it, we all looked at each other like we had just – and man, we blew the blue squad out that day, too, just to, <laughs> yeah. just to make it clear. I think we won every scrimmage. And, man, we went on to win four games. And that's that response I was talking about. Like, he want to he wanna fire you up to get you to have that carryover on the court, man. And uh, I'm pretty sure you remember that series, yeah. man. And, and honestly, like, what I said, like he's, he was honest. And he was going to the main guys. He wasn't yelling at the fifth, sixth guy. He was going at the main guys. And, and the other one just going to follow suit. It's just, it's just how it works. Also making you mad. I broke the story on, uh, on Twitter, actually, that you were going to win Defensive Player of the Year. And I knew because one afternoon I was about to go on the air, my phone rings, and it's Tony. And you guys are in the middle of the playoffs. And I'm like, what in the world? He was mad. He said, he said, he, was mad. he said, Chris. Oh, he and I said, mad. yeah. And he said, this mom... Hadn't talked to me in two weeks. <laughs> you and we mad. get off the plane. He said, Tony Allen, I need to talk to you. Tony Allen, I need to talk to you. He uh, said, we get off the plane. He said, he come up, put his arm around me. And he said, I just wanted to be the first to tell you. Mark Gasol won defensive player of the year. He was so hot. And he said, this mom. And I said, I, I, oh, hey, hey, I'm like, like hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm like, Tony, I'm like, are out. you saying – are you saying that Mark uh, won defensive player of the year? He's like, yeah, man, he just told me, whatever. I go straight on Twitter, I'm like, reporting it. Mark is always going to be named defense. I said, Tony, that is news. And he's like, I don't give a <laughs> <laughs> I think, no, but we, we were not on the plane. We were, we were practicing we were in practice. at UCLA. We were okay. And I see him storming from the back of the bus. Just takes oh, off. the bus, that's right. And he was so mad and like, man. And like, what are you talking about? Like, I. 
Obviously, you didn't even care. I didn't even know. No, he did. I didn't really did care. I, I, I didn't. didn't care. I, no, not I care. Like I didn't know that that was an award. Like Mark, I, it makes it even worse that you didn't even care about the award, and it's the only thing in the world he cared about. And uh, he know that. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Know, it's, I know crazy. That. it's crazy. It's crazy because <laughs> it's crazy because like yo, it all made sense. Cause when he won his ring. You know, and I saw what he put on the ring. He put the grit and grind on the mm -hmm. ring. Yep. I say it come back full circle, man. I'm telling you, I was smiling from it. I think a tear probably came out my eye. But, man, when you did that, bro, I ain't going to lie. That was gangsta. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. That was gangsta. Because yeah. I was like, yeah. all right. And then it's like, he said, I think you told me when you came to my crib, when, you know, right yeah. back. He said, I got the ring now. You want the defensive player? <laughs> <laughs> uh, buddy, buddy. Or no? yeah. <laughs> he said, hand oh. it to you. That was funny, man. But yeah, man. I mean, it was an award, man. I, I was feeling like a guard hadn't won it in so long, and I was chasing it. Uh -huh. I was chasing. I was chasing it. And uh, but to his credit, I, I, I helped a lot that year. I was on the That's defensive right. end. I was tagging Bruh. and digging like, and on. you know helping out. You know, so either way it went, it was all up. Who was the best team defensively in the league? No I, question. I, I don't believe like. Defensive player of the year, like how how you measure that without putting the team in it. Like mm -hmm. I understand it, you you know everything is about marketing and and you know it's something that you can chase and but it's more about team. It's a team sport. For yeah. sure, it's always For a sure. team sport. And so I understand why and, and everything. But is there an individual accomplishment you're most proud of? No. See, you don't. Him. You really that's don't him, care. Dog. No, I'm that's trying to think. Him. I'm like He's so selfless, no. bro. No. Look at him. He don't. The All Star Game. The also game was cool. Is it like a validation? Like, okay, she, uh, let me see what she's seeing today. And getting to do it against your brother. I mean, that that's was for, that was the second one though. But that's for that's how. Yeah, I, I like the first one especially because you're nervous again about playing the game of basketball. You had seen there with, you know, Steve Nash, Kobe Bryant, Tim right. Duncan, Dirk Nowitzki. Like, you grew up watching those guys, and all of a sudden you're in the locker room with them. That's that's cool. That's like, okay, let me see how they move. Let me see how they how they operate, how they talk, how they approach the game. I went in there trying to, I'm trying to win these games too. I, uh, <laughs> you yeah. didn't know any better? No, I just like, because if I take it down, I'm going to lose. I'm not that talented that I can just cruise on games and right. trying to win, like no playing defense or not talking right. or not. You used I, to have I, ass I, pretty I much. I, you can't win. How much do you watch now? Whew, quite a lot. Um, but, you know, watch European basketball, NBA basketball, college basketball, obviously now. Um, I, I like to watch basketball just because you can, Speak some of the things and, and see things that you can apply um, at different levels. So it's I like watching basketball. What's a, a day in the life like now? What uh, does Mark Gasol do on an average day? So um, it turns around my kids now more than anything. Like you know, it's like their schedule, and, and then I'll just build mine off, off of them. Um, I have to go up to Girona where we have the team there in the club, and, and, and we're growing. And how far it, is that? About an hour and 50 minutes from, from my house. So explain to people right, for, for that don't know just kind of how the basketball uh, ecosystem works there and then your involvement. ACB is supposed to be the second best league outside of the NBA, right? Okay. The NBA is the first, the best home league. Then it's ACB, Spanish league, um, is the, supposed to be the second. So we built, uh, founded a team back in 2014, but only with kids at first. So like only the foundation, only the roots, only kids from – years uh, 13 to 18. Okay. Fast forward to uh, 2017, I've made the first senior team. We started in fourth division. We kept growing, growing, and then once I, you know, I decided to uh, let go of my NBA career, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go back. My team was in the second division by then. I'm gonna play for my team, bring them up, try to bring them up obviously to the first division, bring up the ticket sales, um, learn a lot of things of how things are working here and try to make it to the ACB, and we did that. So are you the owner? Uh, 100%, yeah. Mm. You are 100% you are owner. owner of this team. Yeah. And so this now consumes you, making this, it, it, I mean, it, outside it, of family it, life. It takes away the free time but, yes. and, 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 and stuff like that, but it, you learn so much. Like, you learn from the front office aspect of it. You learn from the coaches, how coaches react. You obviously have the, the players' perspective, mm -hmm. so you're trying to, create something or adapt something that worked so well here in the NBA and everything that you learn along your journey mm -hmm. and from culturally, the national team, culturally, yeah, yeah and, and trying to bring it because one thing, a lot of things that are done here are much better than done in, 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 uh, in overseas. Like the individual work that we put in here 
it's, it's skill work. Parallel. Yeah. yeah. Right. But then it's how you translate that into team success. That's where we miss it, right? Like the priority is like, okay, we, we, we're going to work out one on zero for two hours, but then I'll give you the context that, or the goal, why you're doing it and explain to you how this is going to translate into the games. I'm not doing you a favor. So I see a lot of guys that, you know, spend so much time into dribbling. You're not going to have the ball in your hands most of the game. So obviously you need to work on your dribble. It's just the, finding that, that percentage, fi finding that balance. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what the things that I like to do. And in terms of team building and figuring that how, out, like, you know, how to, how to, what, what kind of players you want, and does your roster change out? Is it an every year your roster is a new roster? Uh, definitely the coaches uh, have been changing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> are, you in, are you impatient? or No, no, it's just, it's just a, a way. You just got to find a, the fit. A, a, the standards that, that, you know, that you like to see and, and how you, they react to certain things. Um, you know, it's, it's always important to me. I only have five things on offense, five things on defense that I give them is a structure. From that, you paint the house how you want, put the whatever mm. you want on the inside. Decoration is your choice, yep. but this is the foundation and, and the wall. So if you stay within that, I'm, I'm cool with it. Do you find that you now watch basketball through the prism of scouting players? Uh, all of it. You all do? Of it, all of like it. Like when you're watching, though, are you thinking like, hey, this guy, like, well, you know I what I mean? From watching so much basketball and playing for games, you're always going to have that, like you, tendencies. And But now you look more at the mindset of the players. Like, at, the, at least for me, like, everybody has talent. Is what's your mindset that is going to separate you and going to make a difference, really? And, and that's the feel what we're trying to do. So you cannot jeopardize and, 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 and take shortcuts in that. Like, you cannot oversee, like, well, he don't have a good attitude, but he's very talented. Well, that, I think that's short, short term. I think about big three. Hell, I need to be signing up over there, huh? <laughs> would you sign Tony to play for your team? Day at least. Right now. <laughs> you right will. now. Right you, now. You would sign right now. The check might not make him happy, though. Hey, you weren't here last weekend, right? Like, uh, he did a he did a starry thing, the jumper. How did it go? Bro, the wind was blowing. <laughs> what happened? But you know, you always just tell swing, me. I'm a swing, swing. Swing guy. I'm not swing, the, swing, <laughs> swing again? I'm not the swing, swing. I'm the swing guy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, boy, in boy. this instance, I was a swing guy. I should have been. Uh, but hell, uh, Rudy, he, he only made 10. I mean, no, he made nine. Rudy and, was here too? Yeah, yeah Mario Chalmers was there. Mario Chalmers made uh, 10. When was going? What, and, and what was, was, the, what was the game though? What was the game? We had shoot three shot pointers, three point line, and Starry. Uh, Scoot you know, in a little bit, killer. Just yeah, I, I should have shot it. <laughs> I, I start, you he know, told you your own and, career. And listen, and listen, a it's bit. crazy because I was surprised I even hit that six. You know, I tried. I don't shoot like this no more. <laughs> you you form shooting now? I'm now form okay. shooting now, so I'm, I'm a little right here in the front now, and it still didn't pan out. But damn. <sighs> Them jump shots. One hey. thing, one thing about him. <laughs> do you, hey, do you think those teams? Everybody always does the like different eras thing, yeah. right? And they're like, well, could the '90s Bulls play against these teams? Whatever. Do you think your team with the oh, way there, there it is, right there? there. Look at this, Mark. Okay. This is broke. Oh, no, look, this look. is broke. Dude. I mean, he ain't jumping. Yeah, look at so he needed jumping. to jump. He 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 he, 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 can't. Can't. he don't have his lift. Like he, he, he needs to jump bad real knee, high. Bad and knees. on the way down, he shoots. Bad bad I see, and that, and I didn't know that when I was playing. See, if I'd have knew that when I was playing, I'm telling you, I'd have shot a little better. You this, know, that's cash. This poor D. Look, that one looked good though. Who the hell was recording all these misses? Oh, there you go. But that's my new form. Now, uh, Mark, it's funny you notice that. Like I'm, so I you flat footed now. I'm flat footed now. I don't, and, and but when I used to play, you right. I used to jump as high as I can and shoot it on and, the way down. And then make up your mind about and it. And I'm just now learning. I didn't have to do that when I was. Playing. With the way it's all spaced out now, do you think those teams could win now? Us with you and Zach and Tony and Mike. Like, is it just a team of a bygone era where now? Everybody well, has we, to be able to shoot threes and you're spacing true, it out. Th and true that, true that. That is one of the factors that affect him. But my whole thing is I would get irritated. You know, just the touchy, the, the touch fouls, you can't hand, you can't put the arm bar. And just to see Mark all the way in the drop. <laughs> oh man, I probably won't talk to him until the exit yeah. meeting. You, you get Booker coming off the screen and just <laughs> raised and he's behind like oh, hitting Mark. like wh whoever big, like Nurkic. And like he would be mad. Like I would not I, be allowed. I, I don't I would think not. I could. That's yeah. what I, say. I tell yeah. everybody. I, say, I don't think I could play in this league. And I think uh, Coach Silver. I'm gonna say Coach Silver. Adam Silver is gonna probably put a little more physicality back into the game. 
and start letting them bigs get back down. He's starting post. to let two post All Star break. You yeah. can tell they're calling. They're letting more stuff go. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just the obviously the numbers now mean so much. Uh, yeah. To, uh, and to make decisions and now, and back then it was a bit different. It's How much do you keep up with the Grizzly seasons? Um, quite a lot. Quite you a do? lot. Yeah. I mean, last couple of weeks I've been on the move a lot, so I haven't. Well, this season you're, you're yeah, forgiven but, if, you, but, uh, <laughs> if you're not watching it now. But, you, but you've been through these kind of seasons too, where a, a season gets wrecked by injuries, and it's yeah. like, okay, reset. We'll be back to being good. When the team was healthy and everybody was playing, nah, they look good. Yeah. They look good. They look like Amazing. on a mission. They look on a mission. They had. Ja is a you know guy that everybody wants to you know That's right. follow and, and is able to do so, and uh, everybody played their part perfectly, and it look, they look really good. So hopefully, I guess the, the last remaining connection is Jaron. Yeah, he was right. He was like right. that's the last connection oh, to yeah, you, you like, and him because he, he was, was a rookie. He, how old, he was like eighteen or nineteen when he that's first right. came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, did you think he was going to be an outstanding player in this league? He could. Uh, he was different. He was different. He, you could see the change of like how players are and uh, and how talented they are. He he could drive. He could shoot threes. He could block shots. Um, I mean, it's now you know how you put everything together as a team. And, exactly. And, and, and when everything was together, they look pretty good. So I'm, I'm you know, I can't wait for next year and see them and watch them play and uh, and, and root for them. It's going to be Saturday night. Memphis uh, Memphis made Mark Gasol 33. Don't play now. They made this look like. The Project Pat cover. Mr. Don't Play. Because you loved Project Pat. <laughs> that was my, 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 my two uh, teammates uh, from Fraser. Like, they, they the one to put me into Project Pat. And they say in the dark it helped you learn oh, they English. Were there, they were, yeah, well, it helped not, you learn not great English. One, but not <laughs> great English, but yeah. Like, we spent, we spent so much time together, man. That, those man. days were the best. We, we knew a window from the, from the little high school uh, gym that was broken, so we could break in at night and, and play, and that's all we did. Like, honestly, like every day we would try and just go around the city trying to find games and play basketball. Why do you think it was such a love affair with you and the city? I think the city don't judge, you know, past or like you know, they just care about you and, and what you're willing to do, you know, and, and every day. And, and I think that went away uh, along the way with everyone that stepped into Memphis. Like, they just judge you for today. Mm. They don't care about your past. They don't care about it's like how you're going to, you know, who you're going to be today. And, uh, and, I, and that just fed perfectly with me because, you know, always like, oh, you prowess, brother, or you, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to be this, or you're going to be that here. Like, hey, I like what you did today. Like, more of that. And, uh, and, you know, it was just, it worked out perfectly. You felt like there wasn't, it was not judgmental. I have also a selective hearing. Like, I, I hear what I, what I want to hear, and I feel, you know, and connect with the people that I want to connect with um, because there's a feeling, and, uh, and, and that feeling here was, you know, like that. They didn't care about what other people thought of them either. Like, the, Memphis doesn't care what L.A. people think about Memphis. Like, we don't care. Like, we're not going to care now. We haven't cared the last 30 years. You don't care about us, so don't judge. Uh, so. I think that just you know uh, resonated with who I who I am and uh, and it stuck with me. Obviously, Zax is up there uh, in the rafters right now. We had that night. Have you thought about what this is going to feel like having thirty three retired in FedEx Forum? I think it's the kind of uh, event that uh, that you can imagine, but until you you know you walk that walk, like it's, right. it's, you, you right. don't really know what it's going to feel like. The anticipa anticipation is crazy, like. I have a lot of emotions balled up, um, but I think it's just going to be you know, a very unique feeling that uh, that not many people can say. And to be up there with those cats, with, with Zebo, with TA and Mike, so to be. eventually, eventually, <laughs> yeah. eventually, like I can't wait to come back. And <laughs> there was a bit of a delay. Low <laughs> 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 down, boy, the boy, low down. Uh, it's coming though. It's coming. Uh, it's coming. We got it's you on the right track. Right, We're dig good. It, yeah. dig yeah. dig I'm, I'm very happy and fortunate to, to be able to be. It's going to be the four of us up there, and rightfully so. Uh, so um, that's you know that's all I care about. And is it a little annoying for you guys that Mike is still awesome? No, he it, is uh, like essential for the Timberwolves. Me. He is playing great. It man. don't surprise me, man. He, uh, he's been unbelievable. Those, Mike always been one of those cats. He he took care of his body. You know what I mean? Yeah. He plays the right way. He always could shoot. And he always had good 
camaraderie skills to bring everybody together, man. He know how to talk to people. He know how to talk to everybody. And he, he just fits right in to any situation. So I'm not surprised at what he's doing right now. He just signed another deal. So big shout out to Mike, man. He keep going. He probably got about two more years after that. On the Udonis Haslam side after that, but you know, <laughs> but he just that kind of he got that character to where you want him in the locker room at all costs. Yeah, in any crowd, Mike will you know race, and you put him in a good team, he's going to make a great team, and if if the team is great, he's going to make him even better. So, uh, Mike, you know, very happy for him. I think you know a lot of things that you see, uh, you can live through him and, and watch him, and and then you know you understand. Uh, how he helped the team win, and, and I love that. Last thing before you get out of here, because I know you got to run. In the documentary, they cover this, and then obviously I know when you're in town. You're going to be in town for a week. The work you did and how special these hospitals are to you yeah. that are in this city, right? And there's a lot of clips and a lot of the relationships that you built there. And obviously your family had a very strong yep. uh, connection with St. Jude almost immediately. When, when your parents moved yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that were their, you know, their feel, uh, my, my, my parents, both my parents were in the medical, medical world. Uh, I was not a doctor. Uh, right. And, and my way of helping patients was that, and not patients and their families and what they were going through. Um, it was very dear to me. And, and, and I think they helped me more than I helped them. They gave me more strength um, to overcome any challenge that we faced. Uh, obviously, it's first world problems, right? When you lose a game or you're not perform or, you know, whatever injuries uh, that you're going to recover from, when you go and, uh, and deal with them, you see a different perspective in life and, and you see a different type of fight. Um, unfortunately, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of the, the stories and people that I met and, and kids that I met didn't make it. And, and, and that, that changes everything uh, on how you, you know, perceive life. Um, and thankful for, to have hospitals like Le Bonheur and St. Jude that will, you know, go above and beyond for, for those families and kids. Uh, so now that I have kids, uh, you know, if anything were to happen to me, I, I know where to go. Yep. He is Marcus If You see him bouncing around town this week. Say hey to him. Give him a high sure. five and congratulate him on his uh, number going up in the rafters. First 5,000 are going to get this record on Saturday night. Very well may be an Embiid sighting, too. Because yeah. they're saying he's coming back this week. So oh, maybe really? – uh, and we may have to go ahead and throw you in a uniform on a 10-day. Yeah, you want to play on Saturday? No. 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 You look good, no. man. You yeah. yeah. No, I, can, I can. You can't get us a bucket, a rebound? I can Some? get you a stop, maybe. A, a stop. Five fouls. <laughs> a lot of claps. <laughs> a lot of yelling the schemes. That's how I feel, That's about bro. it. It's going to be retirement night on uh, – the Jersey retirement night on Saturday night – at FedEx Forum for the Grizzlies versus Sixers. Man, thank you so much for coming in. We love pleasure, seeing man. you here, and this is going to be the best. I can't wait for Saturday night. It's certainly going to be one of the most special nights of the year uh, by wide margin. And, and enjoy, enjoy the week. We will. We'll, we'll, yeah. Back home for you. See, uh, I know uh, wife and them going to get know, up with I each know, other. We're we going to bump heads. We'll let Mark sure. bounce, and we'll be back after this. Chris Vernon Show. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesars Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon 